Hi, today I'm going to do a Japanese makeup look. I'm also going to show you my Japanese haul, all the things I bought the last two times I've visited, so late last year and last week. Um, and I've got lots of really exciting products to show you. I also wanted to say that I know I've been a bit quiet on my blog and also posting videos like the last six months. I haven't probably posted as regularly as I used to, but that's all about to change because I've now finished my book. I hadn't told anyone I was working on a book, but it's been two and a half years of research and actually longer than that for the research, but a good two and a half years of work. And in the last year, it's been very intense. Um, it's a book on the history of makeup and I'm really excited about it. I can hardly believe the process is coming to an end. Um, I just received today actually the cover proofs. So I finally got to see how my cover looks when it's all mocked up. And um, if you are subscribed to my mailing list, I'm actually going to share that with you exclusively this Sunday. So if you're not, I'll put a link and um, do subscribe because I really wanted to share it with my loyal viewers before anyone else has seen it. Anyone else in the world, it's not on Amazon, it's nowhere. So I literally just saw it myself today. So um, do subscribe and um, let me know actually what you think what you think of it when when you get the mailing list and if you want to share it put the hashtag um of the name of the book i'll i'll, I'll explain in the, in the in the mailing list so i can see what you all, you guys all think i'm obviously really nervous but really excited as well so my blog is going to be i'm going to have time now really to film a lot more and to post a lot more so I'm, I'm happy about that. So on to my Japanese makeup look. Now I've been visiting Japan on and off for about the last 13 years, a lot. Initially when I was creative director at Shiseido and um, again more recently with Longcom and I've been able to kind of see the transition slightly in the trends and, and the makeup looks. So before I share with you some of the differences I've noticed over the last 10 years in the Japanese makeup look, I'm going to start doing my foundation. I'm going to use Albion Gel Foundation, Gel Mask. This is one I bought at the end of last year. And this is a very full coverage foundation. I'm going to thin it out a bit, but it gives you that really kind of incredibly um, flawless look. So you can thin it out a bit, but if you build it up, you really do get a fully made up look. And one of the things I think I noticed, I remember being there a lot kind of 10 years ago with Shiseido and um, the look was quite a matte look. It was very full coverage on the foundation and um, very kind of, you know, that really kind of pale skin, but it was definitely more of a matte look. This time I noticed in the last year, really more luminosity, possibly inspired by a lot of the Korean trends and the Korean makeup brands that you see in Japan now. Um, but I definitely noticed, I'm talking about like the average woman on the street had more of a kind of, you know, more of a luminous look to their foundation. There's still that kind of flawless thing happening and that very kind of even toned, but um, definitely not as shiny or as the Guan look in, in um, Korea, but, more luminosity than I noticed 10 years ago. So I'm just going to see if you put this on just with a flat brush, you really get that kind of amazing, almost like hyper real fake skin, like really perfected. So you can see that's given me like a quite a mask like effect, but it's kind of amazing the texture of this foundation. And it is a department store quite expensive brand a lot of the products by the way i'm going to use today are drugstore but i did think this was quite unique in that it sort of looks quite natural even though it's full coverage um i love that kind of sheeny effect it has that sort of hyper real skin effect and um, i hadn't seen anything like it in european brands so um i absolutely bought it and i've used this on myself quite a lot it has got a high spf so it's not a good one for photographs but it certainly looks quite amazing um, so the concealer I'm going to use today is the clay de po one this is considered the absolute gold star of concealers in Japan um, this is a really nice creamy but again quite full coverage concealer you don't need to use a lot it doesn't look in any way drying even when you do use quite a bit which is what's so nice about it 
They also have a very nice um, foundation as well, Clé de Peau. And then I don't think I need to do that much concealing because the Albion foundation more or less covered all my lumps and bumps and I have got quite a few spots at the moment. Maybe just there. Yeah, it has pretty much taken everything out. Now it is quite a shiny effect um, foundation, which isn't this, to look this shiny isn't really fashionable in Japan, um, but it is aimed at a more dry skin and this foundation is um, very, very hydrating and moisturizing. So I'm gonna use some powder and take off a lot of this excess shine. I think particularly if you've got a combination skin like mine, this foundation is a little bit too shiny. So that's the flawless base that's absolutely the thing in Japan. Not too shiny, um, but just very, very perfected and you can't see any kind of blemishes or anything. It's very kind of perfect. Um, so in general, the look is quite girly. Um, you know, the, the, the word kawaii is such a big word. It's used all the time in Japan about everything, everything. Your phone is kawaii, your bag is kawaii, you are kawaii, your hair is kawaii. It just means cute. And um, girls love to use that word a lot. In fact, when I did a press conference and I walked off the stage and I walked past some girls and they were kawaii. And I felt very pleased because I've been described as cute. Um, and that is a big compliment in Japan. So like this very girly look, and it's been really that since about the 80s. It's all based on this Gaiaru look, which um, was the name of a pair of some je a jeans brand actually in the 70s. And um, there's lots of different subcultures within that. There's, uh, you may have seen lots of the girls that do this almost kind of Barbie look, which is um, gang Ganguro, um, which is this really tanned look they do, like a Western look with kind of blonde hair. They look a bit like sort of Jersey Shore girls, like this kind of big bl blonde kind of blowed out hair and really orange kind of tans. Um, so yeah, so there's lots of subcultures, there's lots of different looks, obviously there's age appropriate looks, but at the end of the day, they like quite a girly makeup look in general. So not to generalize too much, but this is what I'm kind of seeing. So I'm going to start by using um, this eye palette. Most of what I'm using now is from um, the drugstores, so good prices. And the eyeshadow look tends to be quite light. I mean, obviously there are, as I say, there's like, um, there's a, you know, every look has a kind of more extreme version. Um, particularly, like I said, the Ganguro girls do like basically white eyeshadow, pure white. But this is a more kind of everyday look that you see. So quite a light, shimmery eyeshadow is popular. And then really defining kind of around the outer edge. And you don't really see a winged look. It's all about big eyes. You know, if you think of anime characters, and you think of the photo booths, you know those photo booths in Tokyo where you go in and you have your picture taken very cute and then you make your eyes look huge. It's really trying to achieve that look with makeup. So it's more about bringing them round and down. So it's not kind of winging out and making the eyes very high. It's really about kind of almost pulling those outer edges round. So now I'm gonna use the darker shade from the palette. It's this Visse, I don't know how to pronounce it. It might be Visse palette. You can see everything is hearts and bows and cute, 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 kawaii, kawaii, kawaii. Um, but it's really nice texture actually. So I'm just going to go along the lower lash line, but it's only at the outer edge. So again, it's about making that round, roundness. In fact, I've gone too heavy on that this side here. So I'm just going to take that off and buff a little bit. So by kind of taking down those outer corners, I'm really thinking about coming down here and round really round, big, wide, round shape, and then just blend. So onto eyeliner, and one of my favorite things to buy in Japan 
are the drugstore eyeliners, particularly this one, One Day Tattoo, the 24-hour, super long-lasting, real-lasting, it's called actually, eye pencil, and this is in the dense black. Um, this pencil is amazing. It goes on really kind of dense, almost, it looks a little bit like you've used a liquid. You just build the colour up. It really doesn't come off at all. I mean, you can do wings with it, you can do waterline with it, and it really, really stays on. Now the look is kind of just quite a thin line. It's not the kind of thick, thick line, and it doesn't really wing out that much. I mean, obviously there's all different looks. Well, I'm kind of generalising a bit, but the majority of girls will do more of a thinnish line along. So there are degrees of this Gaioru look. Obviously there's the very natural kind of version of it and lots of the girls just have a wash of very shimmery light eyeshadow and then the liner and then the lashes. Um, but then there is this more kind of shaded and, and bigger version. So there are really degrees of all of these looks and Gaioru actually just means gal, like girl. So next I'm gonna curl my eyelashes using the Shuemura eyelash curlers. Great Japanese invention. The sheer mirror ones, I mean, not eyelash curlers. And you can see that eyeliner doesn't budge. Now, lots of pencils come off when you do this, but this one does not move at all, even if you're right down to the roots. Eyeliners, mascaras, and false lashes are the things to buy when you visit Japan because Japanese girls like to make their lashes look longer and fuller and thicker, make their eyes look bigger. So all the, the quality of the, um, the eye products is just fantastic. And um, the price is very low. So I'm going to use for my mascara today, Dolly Wink Mascara, which is a very good Japanese brand. And they do mascaras for everything, lengthening, curling. I mean, you name it, they've got it. This one is the lengthening one. Um, so. You can see how good the payoff is here. I don't need to put much of that on. A couple of strokes and my lashes are kind of enormous. And underneath. And when you walk into the drugstores, it's, they're just crammed with stuff and lots of the shelves have kind of discount cards on and they have videos playing on the shelves. It's just pink, everything's pink, there's bows everywhere, there's glitter, there's kind of um, music coming from the videos, it's, it's brilliant, it's chaos. So the false eyelashes in Japan are amazing, they have every different style, very different from what you can buy here in Europe and in the UK and even in America, I mean they've got every, from really, really natural looking ones that you can hardly see. Most girls wear them kind of daily, but you wouldn't even notice because they're so fine. And often they do like brown mixed with black hair that is just so subtle and beautiful right through to the crazy kind of full on like mad lashes. Each company will have like 200 different styles. Um, so when you go in and you see them all displayed in the drugstore, you'll see like a thousand sets and um, they're cheap, much, much cheaper than they are here. So I'm going to apply these Dolly Wink ones. There are lots of different brands and they're all really, really good, by the way, all the, the drugstore brands. These ones are called Girly and Cute or something lashes, which a lot of the lashes are called, to be honest. These are number two and they're very thick in the center. So having that kind of the thickness in the center gives you that round kawaii look big kind of anime-ish look. Just got to let this glue dry a second. So I've got my lashes on, I'm starting to feel much more kawaii and there are really lots of different degrees of this look that you see on the streets of Tokyo that you can do. Everything from the kind of really kind of almost natural looking version. Lots of the journalists actually, the beauty journalists that I met last week and lots of the girls that I met when I was there for Longcom's 80th birthday party, they had just the brown, the very fine brown false eyelashes on during the day. So it gave them a much softer, sort of sweeter look, but right through to those kind of more ganguro kind of girls that have not just the big lashes on the top, but they also have them on the bottom as well. 
often just at the outer corner. There are loads of different amazing lower false lashes you can buy. Um, and they combine that with a sort of white pencil on the, on the waterline. So you get real, you know, a diff so many different variations of this kind of big eyed look. So on to, um, because I haven't been able to show you actually all the false lashes, I think I'll do a blog post next week. So check out my blog next week and I'll take pictures of all the different false lashes that I bought so you can see the difference between the really kind of subtle, beautiful ones, the very delicate ones right through to the more kind of dramatic versions. Um, so on to brow pencils and brows aren't really heavily emphasized in Japan. Um, Japanese girls naturally have quite thin brows they can often be quite sparse quite fine so they demand really good products and as you know i often use the suku ones but you can equally find fantastic brow products in the drugstore that again are reasonably priced and are amazing one such pencil that i like is this one by automatic beauty and again really cute box lots of pink bows um, and just the colors are really really good you get this really all across all the brands in Japan, very, very good colored eyebrow products. Um, so I'm just gonna slightly fill in, but really it's about having that kind of, there is a more of a trend at the moment for a thicker brow, but in general, it's kind of a straightish and fairly natural looking brow. So onto blush, and I really noticed that blusher, I think has become more popular with the kind of average woman since in the last 10 years anyway that's what i found just looking around um, and there are just loads of great blush products one that was very popular and sold a lot last year was this one by i think i've got the name right fizzy or vizzy or vizze um, and they do really lovely cream blush that is good for lips and cheeks very very creamy very very pretty it's lovely actually on the lips i'll just show you how delicate and kind of nice this is and the packaging again is very, very kawaii, very sort of Anna Sui actually. Uh, a palette that I found this time, which I love, is this one by um, PRM. And this was only £3.50 and you have really nice blush colours through to highlighters and there's very, very natural contour shade. Now contouring is not a big thing in Asia. It's not like in America where everything is contoured, contoured, contoured. However, you do find some really natural looking very reasonably priced, cheap contour powders. Another one, I mean, that palette I thought was amazing for the price. Another one I thought was really good was Candy Doll, that uh, was another drugstore powder. And I just thought the colors were really fantastic shades that I think in Europe for that, for those great colors and great textures of contour, you tend to pay a bit extra. So I thought they were really, really good. I'm gonna use this palette today because um, as I say, I was kind of super impressed with the price. Lots of the blushes are kind of more pinky and um, apricotty and quite sort of pastel-y looking, quite light. And there's a kind of emphasis really on the placement and the placement tends to be more kind of apple of the cheeks and a little bit higher up. Cute, cute and girly. It's all about that looking sort of sweet, like a fresh flower. That's the uh, kind of vibe. I mean, there's lots of women, obviously older women, business women that don't wear blush at all. It's not really a big thing, but when it's worn by the kind of younger girls, it's very much got that kind of sweet, sweet look to it. And then I'm gonna use the highlighter from the same palette, just to kind of highlight a little bit onto the top of the blush. And the contour here is just so natural. You can hardly see it really, but in daylight you could just see it enough and it's not really, as I say, it's not really a, a, you don't see a lot of contouring and particularly not heavy contouring in Japan. So on to lips and um, the, the traditional kind of lip that goes with this um, Daigaru look is more sort of a pale lip. It's not really, you don't really see it with reds or bright colors. It's not like, I saw a couple of girls actually this time with a sort of a Korean, bright lip colour but in general you see lots of light pinks and kind of slightly shimmery apricotty colours and quite nudie colours um, through to extreme kind of like whites and things um, but um, 
Yeah, it was interesting actually when I used to be at Shiseido, I remember years and years ago kind of talking about red lipstick and saying, oh, it'll be, you know, we'll do a nice glamorous red lip. And the Japanese women that I was working with saying, oh, you know, red's not Japanese, um, it's not glamorous, it's very traditional, you know, it's considered you'd only wear a red lip with a kimono for a very formal occasion. And it's just so interesting the way colour varies from country to country, culture to culture, and how there's kind of lots of, um, oh, that's all in my book, by the way. <laughs> Was shameless book plug there. Anyway, I, I, I did find it interesting that um, perceptions of colour are very different, and that certainly applies in Japan. Lots of the drugstore um, lipsticks are quite blingy, quite kind of this type of packaging, lots of kind of like Diamante and, and that sort of thing, quite quite jazzy. Um, and the texture is so lovely. Japanese lip technology for products is just gorgeous all like balmy and emulsiony and smooth lovely lovely textures so i'm going to use this one today i don't know how to pronounce this brand actually a u b e o b o b i'm not sure and i'm going to use quite a, a light shade and this is just the sort of shade that you see a lot of the kind of quite um pinkish shade and everything, as well as having sort of quite um, blingy packaging, quite glittery packaging, you get things like free gifts with your lipstick, like that one. It came in a, a little packet with a bow on, of course, and inside there was this little heart-shaped mirror that you can put um, like a little foam trinket that has a mirror on one side and a heart on the other, and that just came free with the lipstick. So very, very cute, very kawaii. Even... Um, when I used to work at Shiseido, I'd work with like women in their 40s and 50s and they'd have like Hello Kitty things all over their phones. I always thought that was really sweet. So that's it, my Japanese-inspired makeup look. And it's a kind of Garayu look, which li the literal translation is gal or girl. So, and it's a very umbrella term that, so there's lots of different looks within that term. But this is just one of them. And it's all about cute, kawaii, girly, fresh flower, sweet, pink cheeks, very sort of soft makeup, big, big eyes, big wide eyes and quite a natural lip. So I hope you like it. And don't forget, if you're not already signed up, do sign up to my mailing list and let me know what you think of my book cover when you get the letter on Sunday. Because as you can see, I'm kind of, I'm trying to like put it to the back of my mind, but I, it keeps rushing forward and I keep almost breaking out in a, in a sweat because I'm so nervous about it. So please do let me know what you think of the cover and um, I, I would value all of your feedback and um, I will see you soon.